I got a special mock draft for you today as the Goat House himself joins me as we alternate picks and do a predictive mock draft. This isn't necessarily what we want to happen or what we would do, but we what we think can happen, what we think a team may do. But go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up. And as always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And hopefully we'll have more collabs like this on the channel go ahead show the goat house some love if you haven't already i imagine you already have but let's go ahead get into the video till next time we got a mock draft for you and and we got the goat house here holy crap i'm here how are you how are you you want to you want to let the few people watching <laughs> know where they can find you uh well it's glad i'm glad to be here thanks for having me and you can find me the goat house on youtube and at goat house nfl on twitter we're covering everything nfl it's uh it's a good time of the year even though football is over there's a lot to cover so uh yeah i know we got you for me it's the christmas season so oh yeah yeah <laughs> but uh draft, we're gonna be draft day is christmas oh i know yeah it's just sad after <laughs> a lot of waiting home. What are we hearing about then. training camp right now? <laughs> <laughs> Get to see all the guys I had like second or third round grades uh, be undrafted free agents and uh, where they go. Yeah. So that's always great. But we're going to be alternating picks here. Um, any preference? Do you want to start with the Jags? Do you want to do you want to do Detroit? I'm going to let you start. I'm feeling, start. <laughs> I'm feeling Detroit. I'm feeling I'm I'm feeling uh getting maybe a little bold with Detroit. All right, all right. Well, I'm probably not going to go so bold. I'm going to kind of with Jacksonville, I'm going to follow the way of uh, of what we've seen from like Dane Brugler and uh, Daniel Jeremiah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Evan Neal personally. I, I like the idea of just, you know, investing in uh, Trevor Lawrence. I mean, I, obviously, like, I think, it, well, you could probably tell me better than this. It's It looks like a pretty good offensive line free agency. But, uh, free agency, yeah, um, yeah. There's a couple, couple guys that are kind of rare. Or last year was kind of like that. Trent Williams was available. It's kind of this <laughs> rare thing. So maybe it's not as rare now because it happened last year. But having guys like Teron Armstead uh, available, and uh, I mean Orlando Brown technically right now is available, yeah. but I'm sure he's going to be off the board. There's a few guys. I mean, it's not deep. It's not deep. But there's a, yeah, like you said, it's it's pretty good. There's pretty good guys at the top there. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Dolphins fan. I'm hoping to land Armstead. Yeah, they should be in on him. Yeah, but yeah, like uh, Aiden Hutchinson, KT, those guys kind of would be nice here. But I think investing in Trevor Lawrence again, not knowing free agency just yet, invest in your uh, in your well, your quarterback. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Evan Neal makes sense at one. Um, all right, so pick two for the Lions. I've been constantly going Hutchinson there, uh, the pass rusher from Michigan, obviously. And I definitely still think it's realistic, but I'm starting to think, maybe I'm thinking too much, but I'm starting to think Kyle Hamilton, Notre Dame safety, is a realistic option there because you look how deep the pass rush class is. I start watching more and more of these pass rushers, and I don't think there's that much of a difference between Hutchinson and some of these other guys. That might surprise some people, but there's a pretty big difference between Kyle Hamilton and some of these other guys, and you look at the Lions. Tracy Walker was kind of their top safety. Uh, he's a free agent, but something I noticed last year they did with him, I think he's a great free, not great, I think he's a pretty solid free safety, Tracy Walker, that is, but they try, They wanted to mix it up with him. They wanted to put him in the box, and he's, that's really not his game. You know, he's just strictly a free safety. So I think with Kyle Hamilton, that rare type of safety there, a chance to be the best safety in, in all of football pretty soon. Um, yeah. The versatility, I, I think they like him. So I'm actually, I'm going to go Kyle Hamilton route. I probably can change my mind next time I do a mock and get, go Hutchinson, kind of back and forth between those guys. I mean, Thibodeau is still an option as well. Trade back still an option, but. Let me get Hamilton. A little bold there. A little there bold. We go. No, that's nice. I think they could, honestly, they probably, like, ideally trade back and still get Hamilton. But, I mean, there, yeah. there's the real possibility that Houston takes them at uh Yeah. I think, if it's, I think if they go trade back, they're probably looking at maybe a receiver. Maybe, like, Garrett Wilson, Traylon Burks, um, possibly quarterback. Uh, there ain't Never nothing know. wrong taking a swing there. Yeah. So, Houston Texans. Uh, I, I guess I'm going to take Aiden Hutchinson, just a, a culture guy, you know. 
really your kind of best player available at this point for Houston. Just add talent to the squad. And uh, Aiden Hutchinson be a good, good, I think a very nice fit there. Yes, it would. Um, okay. Fourth pick, Jets. This is tough. <laughs> tough decision here. Um, I think we got to go with Ike Mekwanu, the NC State offensive lineman. I keep, I've been mentioning this in my mock, so I keep hearing they like George Fant at tackle uh, to pair him with Mekhi Becton. They want to extend him. I think that's just to play it safe, though. I think because you don't know what's going to happen in the draft. I think if you have the potential to get better, you go and get better. And Iguanu is potential to be the first pick. I mean, if Evan Neal didn't exist, I mean, Iguanu would probably be the first pick. So, and I think worst case, he plays guard at possibly a Pro Bowl level. So, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go that route. We're gonna go yeah. that route there for the Jets. And that's big because what uh, Greg Van Rono was kind of their weak spot last year too. So. Yeah, so if they could, play, if yeah, if they like him at guard, then they get even better. Just make sure they protect Zach Wilson, and they're in business. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So th- this is interesting for the Giants because you kind, I kind of want to big brain it. You know, it's like, okay, do, how do I do? I feel like I'm gonna get a tackle at seven. What will the Panthers exactly do? You know, will they will do? They feel like they need to go quarterback. Matt Rule yeah. job on the line, but do I pass up on tackle here? And potentially not, not get at least a qual like because by then like if they go if the uh, Panthers go tackle six it's like okay I'm looking at the fourth best tackle on the board at seventh overall that's not it's not really appealing, but I don't think you could pass on KT he's got the traits. Oh, I am surprised. I feel like just with the Senior Bowl and with the Aiden Hutchinson hype from the season, a lot of people forget about KT. I think people yeah, are kind true. of right in that uh, non-hype train a little too much. So I just I just don't think you can pass on KT at five. All right. So you're going to get the Giants twice in this then. So I got Panthers at six. Tough decision since this is more predict the pick. Because I wouldn't take a quarterback this high. But since... I agree. Oh, this is tough though. Uh, because you got... Cross is a possibility because they got to build that offensive line, but then the quarterbacks there. I really think, I mean, obviously it's going to free agency is right around the corner. We mentioned it. Um, it's going to depend on what they, you know, what if they get a quarterback, whether it's signing one or trading for one, then maybe they pass on a quarterback here. But for right now, since we're not at that point yet, I get the feeling they're going to go quarterback. So, and they would take in this scenario that we got going, I think they'd take Kenny Pickett, uh, the quarterback from Pittsburgh. I think what, why I, why I think he'll be the first quarterback taken, I think he's viewed as the most pro-ready. I think he's probably the smartest of the bunch right now, maybe the safest pick. My my question is, you know, what, where where is his ceiling at? Where Where is his ceiling? And he could be pretty solid. You know, could his ceiling be a, a Kirk Cousins with uh, maybe a little more mo- mobility, which actually isn't the worst thing here. It's not. But, uh, um, and the Panthers were rumored in on Kirk Cousins, apparently. So, um yeah, I think they'd go in this scenario. Then they'd go pick it. Let's see if they add a quarterback before the draft. That would probably gear them towards uh, offensive line. Then probably. Yeah, I think some way somehow that pick's going to be used on a quarterback, whether it's trade or draft. That's a good point. In yeah. some fashion, but I mean, ideally, you could trade back because what they only. I think they this is their only pick inside the top one hundred too. But yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a tough spot the Panthers are in. And uh, rumors at the Senior Bowl is Kenny Pickett interviewed extremely well. That teams liked him. Um, I'm not on that boat, but it is what it is, you know. When you're pre- when you're doing predictive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, for the Giants, I personally love. I I really like Charles Cross. I really like him a ton. Uh, I think big big issue for me with coming into this year was his anchor and i thought he improved that dramatically uh i'm when it comes to predictive it's just like it doesn't seem like uh some of like the bigger guy like bigger analysts are that high on him like yeah it's pretty it's pretty random i think you'll see some people have them around this range and some people will have them down uh, you know late almost late in the first so yeah. yeah, so it's real tough because then it's like, okay, well, how high will like the NFL be on like a guy like Trevor Pennant who has like that mentality, yeah. you know? 
I mean, go. We were talking right before we started recording this. We were talking about how unpredictable this this uh, this class is. It's just anything could happen. Which it's, not how it is, how it is usually. But this one, this class is crazy with the quarterbacks and tackles. So yeah, it kind of goes like, into that. Yeah, even guys like Trevon Walker and David Ajabo. It's like, it's like, what does a team think he can be for them in the future? Because right. like yeah. immediately, not so much. Uh, so I actually I like the idea of playing with that. I'm gonna go with Trevor Pennon. Okay. Let's let's say the NFL. I can see Ohio. he's kind of a dab ball guy. I mean, tough kid. Exactly. Bully he's got of a bully of a blocker. <laughs> I mean, I was saying at the Senior Bowl, I was like, man, this guy, like, he's gonna draw as many penalties as he commits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, some some people could that could be a turnoff, and some people will make. I think most coaches would like that. That's why. That's why I kind of said he'd be a dab ball guy. I can see him kind of liking that, getting kind of a hype guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I could see it. I could, that's realistic. You know, we don't see that much penning to the Giants, but I could see him sneaking up there. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Jer- Daniel Jeremiah just had him go six to the Panthers oh, in his yeah. last mock, and I was like, "What the flip?" Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at it before I uh, before I hopped on with you, so it's like that's why it's like fresh in my head. Okay, yeah. Um, who do I got? I got uh, uh, the Falcons. The Falcons. Yeah, Falcons pick eight. Yeah, this is tough too. This is just tough to predict. Uh, tough to get in, get in their minds over there because they, man, Matt Ryan was pressured so much last year. It was it was mainly from the interior, but they could look to get better at tackle too. It cross sitting there. That's pretty appealing. But I think they can. I you know, their tackles. You know, I guess it's on Caleb McGarry to continue to develop because he's been a little underwhelming. It's been a little underwhelming. Just a I guess. Yeah, maybe I'm being generous there. Um, so they could look to, you know, call it quits on him already with Cross sitting there. They could use some things on defense. Um, they need pass rush bad. Do they view Trayvon Walker as a fit? I think Jermaine Johnson would fit. Um, it's just trying to get in ahead of Dean Pease over there, defense, great defensive mind. I think I'm starting to lean towards – him trying to build that elite cornerback duo because they have AJ Terrell, who's looking, he looked great last year. Um, he's only, he was only a second year. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Ahmad Gardner here. I think they try to build that elite duo. Uh, and then since the pass rush class is so deep, they kind of can wait to the, they got two picks in the second round, so they can wait to yeah. that. But dealing with the offensive line, mainly guard, they're going to have to figure that out in free agency maybe because there is a pretty, in my opinion, uh, there's a pretty big drop-off in the draft a- after the guys, um, you know, here in the mid to late first round. So, But I got him going with the corner, Ahmad Gardner, who, yeah, I recently watched more of him, and he uh, he's excellent in coverage. You know, maybe you could say elite in coverage. I do worry about his tackling a little bit. Uh, not that, you know, I think he wants to tackle. It's just sometimes he comes in, stands straight up and whiffs a little bit, but um, so I guess that'll be why I kept saying I got to get in the mind of Dean Pease because there's some head co- or some defense coordinators that if the guy can't – if you worry about the tackling, they're like, no, we're not taking him. But he's so damn good in coverage. And I see some similarities there with A.J. Terrell and why they liked him. So um, and they, and they uh, so I think that's a pretty good duo there. And they, they, they that might be appealing to them, yeah. I'd say he, so. Pease is a guy that loves to blitz. I've, I've been staring towards the corner position as well with Atlanta. Oh, F, dude, the Broncos. This one's uh, interesting because, like, if they don't land a quarterback, you know, like, what is this? Like, even if it's, like, Jordan Love or Jimmy G, like, yeah, you feel like they, they ha- this pick has to be quarterback. Uh, I, fi- I assume they're just going to figure it out um, before the draft. So if they're holding on to this pick, I'm just going to assume that they – landed one of those like lesser guys whether it's like uh jimmy g or again uh, unproven jordan love uh so i feel like i want to kind of steer to the maybe the the edge class i don't know how in the nfl is going to be on this linebacker class i kind of feel like it's after Devin Lloyd, like there's a, like I love Nicobe Dean. It's just I th- really think the NFL is gonna hate his size. Yeah. So, uh actually they have so many free agents at linebacker. Let's go Devin Lloyd. All right. I like it. You don't really see that that often either, but I think it's very realistic because like you said, they got a uh, bunch of free agents at linebacker. I'd like to think they can get one or maybe two back, but yeah. it, even if they get one, it's still a need. Yeah, Devin Lloyd's. 
Devin Lloyd's pretty damn good. I, I was saying it most recent mock I did. I was talking about how like I I can't really find much wrong with Devin Lloyd. Like he's pretty much the total package type guy. So um, I'm surprised people aren't talking about him more like higher up. Even though he's pretty high on boards, um, I'd even consider him towards like the very top. I mean like a top three player in his class. I'm still I'm still a ways from making that board, but uh, I, I like Devin Lloyd a lot. So yeah, Broncos defense would be pretty nasty with him. Oh yeah. Um, all right, we got the Jets again. And we took Iguanu, offensive lineman, with the first one. Second one. Would have thought about Devin Lloyd there. Um, he's off the board. Uh, we're looking at Stingley and McDuffie. I might be a little higher on Stingley. I, you know, I think people are kind of... Um, you know, because he hasn't been as good as his freshman year, I think people are holding that against him a little bit. Understandable, but you know, talent doesn't really disappear here. So I think when he gets to the NFL, he could play, be playing more like he uh, he was when he's a freshman. But hearing good things about McDuffie, um, I like that he's pretty flexible with the zone coverage and man coverage. He likes to tackle. Um, feels like a, a solid guy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go McDuffie there to the Jets. Yeah. I I think he is definitely a better fit for Salah. Yeah. I'm just curious, like, like how how will he uh, how will you measure up at the combine, like length wise? Yeah, yeah. I think that might be something. Yeah. All right, Washington Commanders, the Commandos. Uh, I feel like this has to be the next place for a quarterback. And as much as I would love to do Sam Howe reunite him with Yami Brown. Uh, I just I think the NFL is going to be higher on Malik Willis and just what he can be with that arm talent, uh, or at least the cannon of an arm. Um, and I mean they have Heineke there; they don't have to start Malik right away. And I mean, as a runner, if anything, he's going to be a Lamar esque playmaker. Not right. similar type of runner, but the dude had 90 force missed tackles this past season. That was second to Kenneth Walker. So I'm gonna gonna go with Malik Willis. I could see it. Um, all right, I get my Vikings. Um, actually, oh, right nice. before th- right before this, I was listening to uh, a press conference for their new defense coordinator, Ed Donatel, and uh, he's coming from Denver. And he was mentioning that he uh, what he wants from a secondary is guys that can play man coverage, and they're pretty thin at corner, very thin at corner. And I see Derek Stingley there. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking Derek Stingley for the, for the Vikings. That falls perfectly for them. Yeah. I did a recent mock and I actually had Garrett Wilson there because I think they're going to use in this O'Connell system and they're going to use more receivers and they would really benefit from that. So I definitely could see a receiver. Uh, but yeah, just fresh in my mind hearing Donatel speak and looking for some corners that can mix it up a bit, but, but have the ability to play man coverage, which there's not too many, too many of them that play man coverage at a high level so stingley is kind of making sense for me right now so that's where i'm going yeah this cleveland pick i i hate getting so lazy with it with the receiver it just makes a ton of too much sense you know yeah and uh specifically who would i go who would i go i i like gary wilson i think he's the most complete guy but then you got to guy like Burks who could be a mismatch nightmare, but I don't know if necessarily that's that's what they go with. I feel like they really like uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, and I kind of sense that that's a, not necessarily a similar receiver to Drake London, but I don't know. I feel like they want a guy that could separate, and I that that's Garrett Wilson in a, in a heartbeat. I, I love Garrett Wilson, so yeah, I got I to gotta do it again. Do it every time. Just can't get away (laughs) from it. Garrett Wilson to the Browns. All right, the Ravens next. Um, Let's see. Some good options here. Oh, uh, I was was thinking Cross since he was still on the board. Yeah, he is, isn't he? (laughs) Is he going to fit the Ravens? Do they want a little bit more of a power blocker? That's the question there. And they would like – they would probably like Penning more, but obviously (laughs) Penning off – off the board to the to the Giants and yeah this is tough with the Ravens this is tough uh I'm leaning we got some good pass rushers still on the board here 
Trayvon Walker, Jermaine Johnson. I'm leaning. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna go with Jermaine Johnson. I think um, they move on from. They move on from Don Martindale, our defensive coordinator, and you know what he liked to have was pass rushers that could drop in coverage. He's he's rushing the inside linebackers, you know, almost just as much as those those edge rushers. So they move on from him. Uh, I think they're probably in the hunt for just pass rushers that straight up get after the quarterback. And they do have Odafe away who could be that guy, but you know he's still a raw raw prospect. Can't expect a whole lot from him still. Uh, even though he had a good rookie year. But I think going to get a guy like Jermaine Johnson who can just straight up get after the quarterback for you, uh, I think it really can help this team who should be a contender this year. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he is real pro ready. Uh, Eagles, so I'm going to get this first one, and then you're going to get the second one. So this will be a bit interesting. But uh, I, I mean, dude, with Linderbaum, you got cross there. It's like a lot of good offensive line talent, but it's like the Eagles, you know, you're almost kind of set there. I would say yeah. they have an embarrassment of riches on the offensive line. But and then obviously there's receiver. Um, I'm going to go in a, like, a, I guess a different direction. I'm going to go with Trevon Walker. I was gonna, actually going to do that for the Eagles. On the next oh, were pitch. you really? <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I thought ah, that was see, I was trying to think. I was like, I don't know. A little different, but yeah, I, I think I think he fits them pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, you don't got to start him at least right away. You can have him in this like rotation role. The physical tools are immense. Like again, how are these teams going to view these guys that are kind of projects and uh, like Walker? I I would say, man, he, he's very, probably best comp right now. At least most recent memory is like a Rashawn Gary. Who ended up being a lot further along than I even uh, anticipated. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, that's a good pick. Um, let's see. I think we gotta go. Well, not too simple, I guess. Uh, looking at Nicobe Dean and Traylon Burks. Hmm. Could use. Could use either one there. Uh, I'm actually gonna go. I was originally gonna go Dean, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Traylon Burks Traylon here. Burks. I think. Uh, Pair him with Devontae Smith's looking pretty good. I like that you can use Burks uh, on the inside and outside, get creative with them. Kind of like w- what they want to do with Rager, only they're just two totally oh, different gosh. sizes. Yeah. Uh, so this and this one's a little more safer of a pick too than Rager was. But uh, yeah, you get creative with Burks. That's what I like because he's a big body guy and you got to get creative, like like we said, like a Rager s- size guy. So um, yeah, I like I like that one for the Eagles. Mm, I so that's actually what I was gonna do with the uh, Chargers. <laughs> so, oh geez, I I like the I wanted to get some size, but also have that like vertical ability. And like I like Chris Olave, I like Jameson Williams, but those are guys you know that need to put a little more meat on their frame. Uh, no, they they're not necessarily out of the question here. Uh, George Karloftis still being on the board, he's another guy that's hard to project i think he translates exceptionally well i just don't know how like valuable the nfl will see his uh skill set combine's gonna be huge for him oh yeah he needs to come out explosive yeah because he's got the short arms his bend ain't great so it's like you better be explosive yeah uh let's see like dean's always an option because linebacker jordan davis of course that just doesn't feel sexy uh but I'm not gonna. I, I I like the idea of going cross here because put him at right tackle. Put maybe? him at right tackle. Yeah. I think he's got the movement skills for uh for the scheme there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they couldn't charters in that scenario that we just had. I, it's pretty hard for them to miss. Yeah, cross dropping to them. Like you said, Jordan Davis help him stop the run. Nicobe Dean help him at linebacker, which he need help uh, at. Uh, Could have went with a corner like. Kyler Gordon, uh, yeah, they, it's like one of those situations where it's pretty hard for them to miss. Yeah, if that's yeah. their actual scenario on, on draft day, it's a pretty good situation. Does Bulaga have one more year? Or? Uh, yeah, I think he's likely to be cut. I could be wrong, but I'm predicting him to be cut because so be a good just cut. can't stay healthy, and they can clear. They don't really need this. They got a lot of cap space, actually, but they can clear a pretty good amount, like over $10 million, like $10.75 million. So, I mean, if you, yeah, if you can't stay healthy – you know, you might as well take that space and, you know, use it on, on a replacement. They get a receiver, they get a linebacker, a D tackle, and then we're talking about a sewer roll contender. So it makes sense to me. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, oh, nice. Saints. Saints are interesting. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do to their roster right now, too, because they're they're uh, in a pretty bad cap space situation. They're going to clear it. But how that plays a part in the draft is, you know, who are they going to get rid of? Because they're probably going to move on from some players. Because as we sit, you know, the Saints don't have that many needs, actually. They, they have quarterbacks, a big need, you know, quarterback. And yeah. uh, they definitely can use a receiver. Uh, but they don't have like a long list of needs, but will they after they have to cut some guys? I don't think they'll cut too many major players or maybe no major players at all. Uh, but as we sit, like I said, looking at quarterback, looking at receiver, which is tough. I would love, I would love for them to go Sam Howell. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> um, mm. I mean, Kobe Dean's dropping pretty far too. Could they go best available there? Uh, I'm leaning towards receiver though. Either Olave or Jamison Williams. How will Jamison Williams uh, torn ACL play a part here? I think players are coming back from those injuries a little better these days. Um, I'm going to go Olave though. I think Olave is a pretty good pairing with Michael Thomas. Um, I like Olave on the outside while Michael Thomas on the inside, but obviously they're pretty interchangeable as well. But, and I, kind of banking on them getting Jameis Winston back for a little cheaper here. And I think Olave with this, he's pretty good at just getting open downfield and kind of catching that home run ball. I think that kind of fits uh, Jameis Winston ball. So I, I like the fit there. Yeah, they, they needed that vertical separator last year. They just didn't have someone that was consistent with what they no. had Callaway and Smith and those guys were. Uh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I didn't anticipate how tough this next Eagles pick was going to be. Oh, I guess not that tough. I, I guess I'll go into Kobe Dean. There we go. Yeah, I was like, I was like, man, where do I go? Corner? Am I in love with any of these corners right at this point? I was so like, this oh. scenario looks pretty damn good for the Eagles. They get Trayvon Walker, Traylon Burks, and Nicobe Dean. I mean, that's that's yeah, they have that's some up there for a dream draft right there. there. <laughs> yeah, um, Steelers are next. We gotta go, Sam Howell. We gotta there do we go. it. <laughs> Got to do it. I mean, oh, I'll boy. be in this scenario. I'd be hoping that they do that, but I think they, I think they would, as well, unless they found a quarterback in uh, free agency or a trade, um, which I was really thinking they would do. But you start to hear these reports that they're high on on these draft quarterbacks and are more likely to go for one in the draft. It kind of surprised me a little bit. Maybe it's smoke for what reason? I don't know. Well. It would make sense, you know, because they're coming out, they're real high on Malik Willis. That makes sense if it's smoke, because why would they come out and say that? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, maybe they're in it. I got like Sam Howell or Kenny Pickett. Pickett's obviously all, well off the board. Um, yeah, so Sam Howell. Hopefully they get an offensive line for him, though, because it would be the same thing as his last year in North Carolina. But I still like his upside. We both oh. do. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, th I think he has great arm talent. I hate when people – Try to say like, oh yeah, he's like Baker Mayfield. I was like, dude, he looks like him. He looks, he looks like, him. like him. That's it. And like, he's about in he, the height, maybe. But yeah, other than that, yeah, I think he's got. I think he's got the better arm talent there. Oh yeah, he's got. I think he's got better touch. Like Baker, just he loves throwing lasers. So, ah, oh, son of a gun. This is a tough pick Patriots. for the Patriots. Uh, I don't know how in on they are or how in they're going to be on a corner. It's just a position they typically don't draft highly if they're drafting in the first round. Um, especially with the reports that <laughs> J.C. Jackson, that they don't want him. So. Yeah, I don't know how. I, I feel like they got to make an offer for him still. I wouldn't be surprised if they did, but that's um, it's interesting. It's starting to sound like they may need a corner. So. Yeah, that just that blows my mind. I, I would have brought him back in a hurry. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I, I mean, I I guess it's easy to say receiver. I think getting a guy like uh, Jameson Williams would be real nice. That downfield separate, probably easy upgrade over Aguilar. Uh, he could separate. People forget how good a route runner Williams is. He's former Ohio State. They love they love those polished route runners. So I think I'll go. With, I'll go with Williams. I think he's a guy that doesn't slip out of the first round, nor does he. Uh, I think he'd go top 20, honestly. He's just got that rare stop-start ability. Yep. All right. Raiders. Raiders at 22. I'm definitely thinking defensive line here, but Kyler Gordon, cornerback from Washington's uh, an option as well. But, yeah, D-line, they need it. They need it bad. They add Patrick Graham, who's a pretty good defensive coordinator. Um, 
Obviously, they're set with Crosby and Ngakwe as uh, as their outside linebackers in that scheme, pass rushers. So they need a defensive front who they have a load of they have a load of free agents with as well. Uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking Jordan Davis. Yeah, that, that actually makes a ton of sense with the scheme change. It's not like what they had on the interior was all that, you know. Yeah, and they go either Georgia interior defensive lineman there with Jordan Davis or Devontae Wyatt, you know. So it's depending oh, on which yeah. one, which one they're feeling. They're both pretty interchangeable. Can line up at nose or D tackle if you need them to. So I, I, I like Jordan Davis for them though. Yeah, now we got the Cowboys here. I I can't I can't watch them fall any further. I love Tyler Linderbaum. And we got the car- we got the Cardinals right now, right? Oh right. dang it, we do have the Cardinals. Dang it! Oh, and I'm I not get gonna- the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, golly gee, that would have been easier for me, because it's like they got Rodney Hudson, but he's he's up there in years, you know? Yeah. Uh oh, you know what? I'm going Drake London. I'm gonna replace uh, AJ Green. Uh, I don't think Drake London will necessarily fall this far. Just I I love. I love how he is at the contested catch. Like, if you're not going to be, like, an ideal separator, you better be, like, a pretty darn good contested catcher. And he led all of college football in contested catches. I think he's a lot more of a smooth athlete than people give him credit for. Like, he's a pretty darn good route runner. Uh, and then force missed tackles. This guy was great after the catch. So, yeah, pairing him up with D-Hop. And maybe not the most ideal uh, vertical threat that then again it's it's um freaking cliff keensbury he doesn't care about going deep anyway yeah. yeah uh yeah drake london's a he's one of those guys that really tough to for me at least to predict where he'll go because yeah like you said extremely good contested catcher um does a bit of everything too i mean usc was throwing him screen passes get end around give him an end around so kind of a rare type of big body contested catcher but yeah will the lack of separation push him down because some teams are kind of staying away from those guys since you know a lot of them end up being bust these days in the keel harry not that i'm comparing <laughs> london to keel oh, harry gosh, but dude. uh There's yeah so he's section <laughs> uh, he's, yeah, so, so uh <laughs> london a little tricky to figure out where he's going to go. Mother truck. Um, and I think he'll be, to, clear, to clarify, I think he'll be better than to kill Harry. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just just my point was a little little tough to predict where he'll land. Cowboys yeah. are next. Yeah, I think we're going to go, I think we're going to go Linderbaum here. I think, yeah. uh, I think, <laughs> I think that's got to be the route. Uh I mean, there's a couple good interior offensive linemen there, too, because Kenyon Green, Zion Johnson are oh, there. Oh, crap, but... yeah. Kenyon Green is available, too, yeah. I think Linderbaum, I think the ability to play him. And that's, that's going to be the thing with him. Are, are the team that drafts him or any team, are they going to be confident with him being able to play guard? Because I think he adds a little more value to his draft position or where he goes if he can do that. But I, I he should be able to, I'd say. So, I mean, the Cowboys, to win if they want to play him at center or guard there. I think having a guy that – uh, could probably do both helps them out too because they got guys going down constantly. So if you need yeah. to slide a guy over, then you can do that. So um, that's why I guess the other two options would have been good too because Kenyon Green's got some snaps at tackle. Uh, Zion Johnson's got some snaps at tackle, and they had him working at center at the senior bowl too. So, um, yeah, the the guard class, the interior offensive line class is, is, is not deep at all, but there's some studs right there, the ones we just mentioned. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's definitely gonna be interesting where they come off the board. Hmm, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, my first thought is like going on the interior, but then like trying to find a space eater. And I don't know if technically that's what Wyatt would qualify. Like he's good against the run, but I feel like they they're looking for more of that space eater. They've been trying to bring in guys like um, shoot, was it a uh, Butler, the former. Uh, Baller, yeah. yeah, the former Carolina tackle, and just haven't been able to find a guy that can can do that well. But uh, gosh, I really do like Wyatt. Uh, the receivers left on the board. I don't know if I'm be willing to go go with the receiver here with what's left. Um, be interesting to see oh, if I, they move on from Cole Beasley. So yeah, I mean, I, I, he's the ripe age of what, like thirty-four or something. Yeah, so. I never really thought receiver for them, but then you were saying it, and I thought, I thought maybe they move on from Beasley, and maybe they need a receiver. Maybe they go a guy like Sky Moore, Dotson. Yeah. Probably yeah. not, but maybe. Probably not. Yeah. 
Uh, I actually, I think I'm gonna go uh, Kenyon Green. There we go. We were just talking about him. And I forgot about him. That's the thing. I feel like he's a very forgotten prospect in this class, just because Texas A&M moved him all over the place. Yeah. And uh, I, I kind of, I, I'd like to see him get a shot at tackle. I think he's got great movement skills, but I could definitely see the allure of just like a hey, guard only. This is your spot. You played it all yeah. in 2022 or 2020. So. Yeah, I definitely think he would be. Uh, he could be a day one starting guard. But like, like we were saying, I think uh, the option to have him as like almost a starting guard and a backup tackle in case yeah. somebody goes down. I think that's pretty damn appealing there. So, Tennessee Titans are next. Um, I think they'd be interested in some of these receivers, but that are off the board. So, uh, mm, I really, I really th- I have a feeling, just a feeling that they're gonna like Desmond Ritter. I think he fits their 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 system there. A lot of play action. He's very good at play action. He's kind of a Tannehill type guy. Maybe learn from him from a year. Uh, but Zion Johnson, I also think they'll like. I heard they actually. I don't know. I'm not predicting this to happen, but I heard that they could actually cut Roger Saffold, which would. Now that I've heard it, it's not that surprising, but it's still a little surprising because he's I mean, he's a Pro Bowl level guard, but yeah. he's getting up there in age and they're desperate for some cap space. So if they do move on from a guy like that, Zion Johnson's definitely, definitely an option there. Yeah, they also have uh, Ben Jones as free agent. So yeah, that's true. Um, I would think they get Harold Landry back, but if they don't, then I think David Ajabo is a perfect fit. Like they actually, sh- they need to. <laughs> um. I, I, I think they're gonna like Ritter. I do. I got that feeling. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Ritter. I don't know if I necessarily agree with the pick. I kind of feel more comfortable with him in the second round, but predict the pick. I got a feeling. Um, I think they would like Jamison Williams uh, if he was still on the board. I think it's a receiver they would really like. Some of those other receivers too. But in this scenario, we're going Ritter. Ooh. All right. This one's this one's a bit tough because I mean now it's Bradyless Cowboys. Like, I've seen a lot of people put dots in here, which makes sense with, you know, Chris Godwin, A.B. gone. They need some some elite separator. Uh, but uh, uh, they also have Carlton Davis as a free agent, and then they also got to, like, uh, sure up some guys for the future, like Jameel Dean and Sean Murphy yeah. Budden. So yeah, this is one of those teams we got to see their free agency first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to know, to know yeah. what they're going to do because they got a load of free agents. And no Brady, like you said. Yeah, no Brady. <laughs> no Brady, no problem. <laughs> but uh, I do like the idea of uh, getting, like, uh, Devontae Wyatt and, like, kind of have him, like, kind of, like, surplant Sue and what he did there. Because uh, uh, Sue, as great of a player as he was, he's just not that guy anymore. Um, Jeez Louise. Uh, you know what? No, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Kyler Gordon. I think after the combine, like we're gonna we're gonna see him skyrocket. Yeah. He's yeah. got ideal size and physical tools. Uh, I, he needs a little more polish, or at least in, need to get better at like kind of being more proactive than reactive. Right. But I think he'd be a good fit here, especially if they decide not to like franchise like uh, Carlton Davis or. Yeah. Well, not. And they were, yeah, that was kind of a problem. Corner was a problem from them last year, mainly because of injuries. But yeah. I think that comes with guys like Dean and Dean and, you know, Sean Murphy Bunting was injured too. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Packers are next. What's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers? We, we're going <laughs> to, I think we're going to find out soon. It sounds like. Hopefully. Um, yeah, I'm leaning towards. I could see them going offensive line because it kind of took a step down this year, and they they really are good at making sure. Yeah, Zion Johnson sitting there. I think it'd be more so tackle they look for though, with the injuries they had. I think they kind of like some of the young guys they got interior. Uh, I like David Ajabo for them, so that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. Uh, I think I I think they're gonna cut Preston Smith. There's some talk about Zedarius Smith's not being. I think he's kind of trolling on social media a little bit. Um, <laughs> Oh, I don't yeah, think, I'm selling my house. Bye, guys. Yeah, I don't think he. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think they're moving on, moving on from him. And Rashawn Gary stepped up this year, but they really value having a rotation in there. Um, 
and that's perfect for Ojabo because you can have him off the field on, and that's that thing with him. How high do you draft a guy that you're going to have on off the field early in his career on rundowns? But I think it's a good situation because you have Gary and Zedaria Smith in there, and then you put uh, Ojabo in there on passing downs. You possibly keep all three in there. It's just what they've been doing. So I like I like the fit there, and there's just so much upside as a pass rusher that it's probably he's probably just too good to pass on at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that's my team, the Dolphins. Glad I got them. Uh, I always fancy I I fancy them going receiver. It's just all the time, no, like the like the top five. They're not there, no, not available. Um, and I I don't really like the idea of the Dolphins getting younger and more inexperienced on the offensive line. Um, or at least if we're gonna give Tua a fair evaluation, but. Zion Johnson's kind of hard to pass. If, I mean, maybe they play him at center. Maybe they move um, Linderbaum or not Linderbaum, um, Liam Eichenberg to like right tackle. Uh, Dolphins actually just hired a uh, Boston College offensive line coach too. Oh, did, oh, that, uh, about a week ago, fresh off Boston College is like Zion Johnson. I think we're putting it together here. Yeah, connecting dots here. All right, yeah, no, let's go Zion Johnson. That's the pick. Yeah, I think if I think he has a shot to go earlier in that, but if he makes to that point, I think he's probably got to do it. Yeah, like again, uh, he's a pro ready uh, prospect, so at least you, like, I think immediately a left tackle or left guard, left guard, and then maybe center somewhere down the line. And he was kind of learning it on the fly at the Senior Bowl, so maybe you don't want to rush him into that. And I really think that they might. I I think Mike McDaniel is gonna view. Um, uh, Eichenberg is kind of like a poor man's um, McGlinchey, so maybe they move him to right tackle yeah. and keep Hunt at right guard. It felt it felt like that was the plan. They may have even said that when they drafted him. Can't remember, but uh, to have him have him as a uh, Eichenberg that is as a as a future right tackle. So I could definitely see that. Uh, who we got? We got the Chiefs. Chiefs can go a number of routes here. Uh, let's see. Could go, could go corner. I don't know if they value corner that or that high though. They seem to develop these under the radar guys pretty well. They got some young guys in there. I was thinking Andrew Booth for a second, but gonna pass on that. I'm leaning towards defensive line. So either pass rusher, defensive end for them, or defensive tackle with Wyatt still there is a possibility. Um, I like King Kingsley and Nagbare. I like the fit with the Chiefs as well as a 4-3 defensive end. Yeah. That's what I had in my last mock, but what Wyatt's still sitting there, and now, now that I'm thinking about it, um, Jaron Reed's a also got Karloftis still on the board, too. Karloftis is a good fit, too. Um, I'm going to go Wyatt, actually, with him right. slipping through a little bit uh, because – they got Chris Jones in there, who's an absolute beast, but uh, they Jaron Reed's a free agent. Derek Nottie's a free agent. I think they'd get one back, probably Nottie, but uh, it was pretty important to them to have kind of all three of those guys, including Chris Jones in there. So um, add Wyatt into the mix, who may be too good to pass at this point. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bengals, they got a lot of uh, cap space, so I think they're going to – probably going to try to bring in a lot of like offensive linemen so they don't necessarily have to go it here because the i think the only other guy that's really probably sniffing uh this this area is bernhard ryman uh mm, mm. could go corner andrew booth he'd be nice uh, i think he's going to test out pretty well i'm kind of curious what his long speed is but like his short area quickness is off the charts he's a guy that can Mirror, we saw the ball skills late in the year. Uh, Karloftis, it's so hard to pass on Karloftis. It's just it's not a, an area of immediate concern for the Bengals. Yeah, this is tough without an offensive lineman uh, worthy of the pick. Well, maybe some of those tackles still left are, but yeah, it's well, a little I, bit of a reach, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Falalele in the first just because I think he's, yeah, a, he's a big project right now. Uh, I think if any of them's like good to go, it's Abraham Lucas is probably a – while his ceiling's not high, I think he could be a solid NFL starter. But I'm not going him in the first. <laughs> so it would be like – honestly, Ryman, he's got good movement skills for Zach Taylor. 
But, ah, I mean, mm, I really do feel like they should, should at least uh, consider corner. Uh, I mean, honestly, Elam would be interesting too. But uh, he's more press. Uh, I'll go with Andrew Booth. All right. And so then we got, we got Apple the Lions. A free agent, and we saw... So yeah, how, they could get better there. Maybe yeah. they move on from Trey Waynes. That didn't work out too well. Yeah, um, they're paying him a lot of money too. So, yeah, they can clear, I believe, like eleven million if they if they move on from him. So that might be the route there. And then, yeah, like you said, hopefully they they could build the uh, offensive line and uh, free agency, so they don't have to reach for somebody in this scenario. Or they could trade up, trade up, and get um, yeah. one of those one of those interior guys we've had we had uh, go already. But the Lions are next. I got a tough decision. I took Kyle Hamilton with the second pick. Tough decision here. Do they go quarterback? Matt Corral still there? Is that a fit though? That's that's the question. I I mean I I, I don't think he is right off the bat. But are they willing to? You know, adjust their offense system. I don't think anything was set in stone last year. I think they were kind of just rolling oh, with yeah. it with who they had. Um, so they could go with Corral, maybe add some more RPO uh, concepts in there, and could go with a pass rusher. Some good pass. We didn't go pass rusher second. Second pick could go receiver. I do like Sky Moore a lot. That's yeah. probably hard for some people to see him in the first round, but I do like him. Uh, this is tough. Can't make up my mind here. I think they would go. I actually think they would maybe a little bull. I think they would go Corral. I think, um, I think that I, yeah, I, th I think they'll like Ritter. It's another team I could see liking Ritter. Cause I think he already fits, uh, their system, but, uh, Corral's got, he's got some upside too. I think the only concern is his kind of his, his size, not in terms of height, really, but, um, yeah, his build. He runs into a lot of contact. Seen him get beat up a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, with him sitting there, and then you get get that that option on his contract since it's a first-round pick. It's always yep. good to have on quarterbacks. Uh, I think they would go that route. That's a tough one, though. They could go with one of those pass rushers. They could go with the receiver there. Well, they they would have another pick coming up anyways the second round. So I think it would make more sense to take if they were, if they were going to take quarterback. They may not at all, but uh, to take it with the 32nd pick because of that option. But Yeah. And I mean – Again, yeah, this is your second pick in the first round. Why not swing for the fences? Especially, I mean, you know Jared Goff's not your guy. Worst case scenario, you start Matt Corral and you find out he's not the guy and you're just a losing squad, then you're in good position next year if the quarterback yeah. class is good. I think they would probably sit Corral behind Goff because that, that's actually yeah. tough because they probably would want to. I could see Corral starting at some point during the year. Though. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably going to get ripped in the comments for not giving the Lions a pass rusher yet, though, or a receiver maybe, uh, But because we went Kyle Hamilton and a little bold, both <laughs> picks, maybe a little, little bold. But, yeah, they definitely need more pass rush help. Maybe they get it in free agency, but they're actually decent on paper, and they got the Okwara bros in there. So maybe oh, yeah. uh, and what, uh, Romeo Charles was hurt Harris last. Too, who played well. Yeah, we'll see if they bring him back. Um uh, yeah, so maybe they think they're okay at the pass rush position. I think they got upside there, but they definitely need more production because they were towards the bottom of the league and, and um, getting after the quarterback there. So we'll see. Uh, I mean, pretty much every team, but we'll see what they do in free agency, and that'll help us a lot with our models. Golly, yeah, well, cause at this point, it's like, ah, uh, because I, I think people, uh, when it comes to the draft, they look at need a bit too much. Yeah, I rather than like there, teams. Yeah. Some teams they'll take the guy that's you know highest on their board, and then scheme fits huge. So yeah, yeah. it's definitely definitely uh, interesting to try to think like a an NFL war room. Yeah, but uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, dude. I appreciate it a ton. No problem. It was a lot I, of fun. I love these collabs. I love looking at other people's uh, perspectives or what they think a team may or may not do. I'm I'm always trying to like just open my mind up to those different possibilities because we know when a draft day comes, it's going to be a lot of, a lot of ROM. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, that's it for the video. Go ahead, do that YouTube thing. It's always much appreciated, much obliged. Go ahead, check out the Goat House. If you already haven't, I don't know if you haven't, then I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. You want any uh, final words? Uh, I, I got pretty much nothing. Thanks <laughs> thanks for having me. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, just switching up on the picks. Maybe next time uh, I'll take the first pick. And oh, we yeah. Can, uh, so to switch it up a little bit and uh, – yeah. Yeah, and then I can it. take Linderbaum for the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right, but y'all, until next time, y'all be easy, my friends. Later.